So let's start with Genesis chapter 3. And we're going to start with Eve. I'm sorry, I'm using Eve so much, right? But this is where the first fall comes from and is one of the first examples or primary examples of uh, testing God, right? Um, you have the serpent who has came to Eve and he, he's trying to trick her and he's trying to say, didn't God say you could eat all the trees? Um, and the woman, um, she replies there, right, in verse 3, um, not you cannot eat it, neither sh should you touch it, lest you die. Right? And the serpent didn't succeed with his first attempt. The woman was pretty smart. Um, so, verse 4 here, um, the serpent has set up a test. Right? with verse 4 and 5. So he's going to try to get the woman, well, let's test this, right? Let's test this. And he's saying, well, I don't think you'll die. I think your eyes will be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Right? That's what it in verse 5. And uh, you'll be able to know what is good for yourself, and you'll know what is evil for yourself. Some people, even to this day, I've heard that spoken, right? The woman has fallen, right? Because here she is about to go test God. The, uh, the serpent here has put enough information in her head to make her doubt. She has to be at this point going, is God for me or is God against me? Many times I've been in that situation, by the way. So it doesn't matter whether you're a woman or a man. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, so she went and inspected this. And it was pleasant to her eyes. It was desired. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took the fruit thereof and she committed. Right? She no longer believed that that fruit would kill her. She never, she never, she did not believe uh, the fruit would bring death. She ate. If you thought something was going to kill you, you would not eat it, right? So she had convinced herself in this test. So what was going on in Eve's mind? Right? What led her to this decision? What did she trust in? Did she trust in what her, her ears had heard? Right. The Spirit of God had spoken to her and said, when you eat of that tree, you're going to die. Right. She looked at the physical, at the flesh. Right. It had a fleshly appearance. And when she went and looked, as the serpent has subdued her, it was pleasant. It didn't look evil. It didn't smell evil, and it even had a desiring look that it would taste good, right? And so, what did she trust in? The physical presence or the spiritual presence? Because when we get into testing God, that's really what we're looking at. Uh, do we believe in our physical surroundings or are we trusting in the spiritual surroundings, right? So, 
that's Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Next, I wanted to look at Exodus chapter 17. Right? And we have another test of God where people are going to fall short. So this time, it's not the woman, but a man. Well, it's a group. It's men and women. Right? And in Exodus 17, notice all the congregations of the is of, of the children of Israel journeyed from wilderness of sin after their journeys, right? According to the commands of the Lord, and pitched in Raphadin. And there was no water for the people to drink. Now let's take this condition that they're in right here. They had water in the journey. And they have pitched their tent. And now, at the place of where they're at, there's no water for the people to drink. There's no water and hole for them to resupply their waters. That's the condition that they have just realized they're in. Wherefore, the people did chide. Now, I don't know what, I mean, <laughs> chide, man. It's not a word that we use today. But it is to toss, to grapple, uh, to wrangle, a uh, controversy, to defend, right? So um, they must have made a little bit of a chaos. Oh no, we're out of water. There's no water. We're all going to die. Uh, why did God bring us out to the desert just to watch us thirst? us and the children and the horses and the cows and the whatnot. <laughs> I mean, um, so, you know, chide is not a very, uh, so they go to Moses, right? And Moses uh, uh, said to them, why are you grumbling? Why are you tempting the Lord, right? Why are you testing the Lord there? Tempting and testing are really interchangeable. You know, where is their their uh, trust at? Why don't they have the trust here? I mean, they have just set up camp. They're looking for water, and they're trying to figure it out. There's no water, right? And God has already divided uh, and parted waters for them, right? Uh, there should already be a realization that nothing is uh, too big for God to handle, right? And you'll see that uh, in verse 3, they thirst for their water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Where thou hast brought us to Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst. Interesting, right? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do to this people? Uh, they're ready to kill him. I mean, they have just figured out there's no water. They have just set up camp. It doesn't even imply that they're out of water. They're looking ahead. They're also looking around. And what are they believing in? They're believing in the physical presence that they're around. And they have no trust in the spiritual presence that they're in. Right? So God has told Moses to take the elders of Israel in verse 5 and take their rod and smite it, uh, which the one that he smit the river with, and go. And behold, right, in verse 6, who was there? Now this is Moses and his rod and his elders. And behold, I, I, I will stand before thee there upon the rock. So 
God's presence is there. And Moses is going to smite the rock, and there shall come out of the out of it, and the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sights of the elders of Israel. Right? And that place is called Massa. It's verse seven here, and it means testing and tribulation. Massa. That's uh, interesting. So the people have shown that they only really have trust in their present condition in the physical and not very much trust in the spiritual condition that they are in. Uh, they are in the hands of the Lord, right? And nothing is too mighty for Him. They have now witnessed uh, the crossing of the sea, and the splitting of the sea, and now they have seen water come forth out of a rock while the presence of God was there, right? So, um, that's, that's pretty big. Alright, so, um, we're going to find another testing here, right? And this is about testing God. Now, uh, we have a result of testing God in this example. Israel did not do and they murmured against what was given to them. But first, let's get to it. Right. So, in 1 Corinthians 10, we get an example of this spiritual meat that they were eating. Right? They were learning. What is spiritual meat? And spiritual meat is these testings that God has put them through for them to learn for them to become better people and they all drank the same spiritual drink verse 4 for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them and that rock is Christ okay um, so that water that came forth out of that rock was an example of Christ and the waters that he delivered unto his people, right? But with many of them, verse 5, um, God was well not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness, right? And that wilderness is what we just went over. Now these things were our examples. So God made those people an example for you to learn from to uh, the intent we should not lust after evil things right what did they lust after the things of the, that were around them right uh, as they also lusted neither the idolaters as were some of them as it was uh, written they just sat down and eat and drank and played um, but verse 9 is where I want to really get into. Neither let us tempt Christ. Now, this is, this is pretty big, right? This is uh, Christ. Now, they must have had Christ to tempt Christ. Interesting, right? As some of them did, right? Also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. So, let's go and see what Paul is talking about in verse 9, right? So, in verse 9, let me set up um, the condition of verse 9. Right? The condition of verse 9 is... They wanted to come and go through Edom. Now this is uh, Numbers 20. So you'll have to go back a little bit if you want to see this. But they wanted to go through Edom. Edom said no. No, if you come through here, we'll make war with you. So they went back and they said, okay, we'll go to the high pass of Edom. Right? We'll, we'll go above you and we won't bother you and 
we'll go that way and, and uh, we're not you know we're not out for trouble right well they went to do it and Edom stopped them and met them with an army and they went back uh, Edom was not a very good brother unto these people right and that's what they were calling upon so uh, they went below Edom right and when the king of uh, Arad the Canaanite verse 1 which dwelled in the south heard tell that Israel came by the way of the spies then he fought against Israel and took some of them right so some of them they took prisoners and they were just they were not meaning anyone harm they were just wandering around all right so uh, israel makes a vow unto the lord and said if thou wilt deli indeed deliver this people into my hand i will utterly destroy their cities and the lord hearkened to the voice of israel so we got our third sign and delivered up the canaanites and they utter utterly destroyed them and their cities and he called the name of the place Horma Horna I have no idea it's a weird name um so here is the conditions of the people so they have went in the way of the south and the way through Edom would have been a lot easier. Would have had water, would have had food. Uh, even if they would have went up above the north, it was a much better conditions for these people in their travel. The south was the hard travel. The south was going to be rough to travel through, right? So they're going to look around in their present conditions again. And what are they going to trust in? Now, God has just given this city over to them uh, in the south. Right? Uh, they have utterly just destroyed the city of people. And the people spank against God, right? And one minute. Let me go up to four. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to come past the land of Eden. So they're uh, going around the land of Edom because they don't want trouble with them. And the soul of the people was much discouraged by of the way. Right? Uh, the way was hard. And the people spank against God and against Moses. Wherefore have we brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There it is looking at their conditions again they believe in the physical understanding of their surroundings right for there is no bread neither any water and their souls now loathe this light bread now that light bread is the bread of Christ that comes from heaven right first uh, Corinthians 10 was talking about this bread so now they're they're bickering about what they are given and what they ain't got and all this surrounding of the physical needs not looking to the spiritual at all so next when we have an understanding of what is testing God right? so here God has laid something out and a lot of people do not know like this once saved always saved I'm saved forever no matter what my actions say or do a lot of that is misunderstood I don't fully disagree with it it's just a lot of it's misunderstood 
and you have John 14, verse 34 there. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also have love another, one another. By this all know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. This is not a request. This is a command. Now, as Eve tested that garden, you could test this. We know the outcome of Eve was death. You could test um, the light bread as they tested that um, bread, um, the manna that fell from heaven. The result of that was serpents that fell, or I'm sorry, that came out and bit them and they died. That was the result of that. pretty big so if you uh, if you don't keep this command and if you teach others that they don't have to keep this command and you're testing God what do you think is going to go what do you think is going to happen Okay, so here in Hebrews chapter 10, um, verse 29, right? Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be, though uh, brought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace not a good thing 